Yeah. Okay. So today a member on the channel asked a very interesting question. I would say important question. What is cuff leak test and when it is done and what is the importance? Basically, cuff leak test is used to predict the possibility of post extubation strider. Suppose the patient is on the ventilator and you are planning and you have extubated the patient. So how are the chances that this patient will develop post extubation strider? So we do this uh, in those patients. Is it done in every patient? Usually we don't do in every patient, but in those patients in which there is a there is a long term ventilation, three, four, five, six days, and uh, there are chances that this patient may develop uh, laryngeal edema or post extubation strider. In those patients, we do that. So what happens basically in this uh, cuff leak test? In normally we have an endotracheal or a tracheostomy tube and the cuff is inflated around the endotracheal tube. So it seals the uh, tracheal wall. Let's see. Uh, Dr. Prina, can you come here? So what happens? You see here. This is your trachea and this is the endotracheal tube and the cuff is inflated. Now what happens in expiratory, in inspiration obviously the air will come from here but during expiration whatever the air which is going from the trachea is going through this endotracheal tube because the cuff has sealed the uh, area no air will leak from here. So this is a normal condition. Now when you deflate this cuff what should happen whatever the uh, expiratory volume is going there now in along with uh, uh, getting exited through this endotracheal lumen it should always leak through the side walls of the endotracheal tube so your ventilator will sense that it has not received full expiratory tidal volume so suppose you have uh, tidal volume set of 500 now when you deflate the cup the uh, because the expiratory tidal volume air has leaked so it will sense that the expiratory limb is detecting only 300 350 because that air has leaked now what happens if the patient develops laryngeal edema or there is a tracheal stenosis, when you deflate the cuff also, the air cannot leak from the side of the uh, tube because it will get obstructed here and the air will again uh, go through this endotracheal lumen. So the ventilator will not sense the leak because all the expiratory uh, tidal volume is getting exhaled through this endotracheal lumen. So whenever there is an edema or tracheal stenosis, there will be no leak in the, uh, means there will not, will not be very much difference between the inspiratory and the expiratory limb. Just a second. So how we will do this test? So what you do? First when the cuff is inflated, you observe the uh, uh, given tidal volume and the exhaled tidal volume. So the cuff is inflated and you are ventilating the patient and then you see what is the tidal volume coming record the tidal volume now you deflate the cuff and wait for 6 to 10 cycles so that it averages over a period of time now there will be in a normal patient there will be leak uh, there will be leak because the air will leak from the side walls so what ventilator will sense that the expiratory tidal volume it will show a leak it will come around 300 350 like that but suppose now if there is a tracheal stenosis or laryngeal edema it will not leak so what will happen the expiratory tidal volume here will come again uh, we have said 500 so it will come 450 500 or 420 so th there will be not enough leak and this will predict that this patient has chances of laryngeal uh, stenosis or tracheal edema and this can develop post extubation strider so how much should be the difference so if the leak of the air is less than less than 110 ml means if 110 ml a volume is not able to leak from the side of the endotracheal tube or 10 percent if 500 is the uh, uh, tidal volume which we are giving if it is less than 50 so this is these are the two cutoffs so we take 110 ml as the criteria in pediatric they take as uh, 10 percent so if less than 110 ml leak is there means if the tidal volume is not dropping below in difference is not uh, more than 110 ml then we uh, call as cuff leak text positive and this predicts the chances of post extubation strider so what you should do in in such cases if your cuff leak test comes positive then you should not extubate this patient give steroids or anti edema measures wait for 24 hours or 48 hours depending on the clinical situation repeat the cuff leak test and now if you if you find now its cuff leak test is pos uh, negative then it is safe to extubate this patient at this stage so hope this clarifies thank you dr perina with me she is there recording this video and thank you for asking this question now go and do read more about this cuff leak test thank you